Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. We are reading uh, chapter 4 in the book, Mystery Babylon, The Religion of the Beast, by Rob Shaw. Let's continue in chapter 4. Sunday Worship of Baal. Where did Sunday Worship come from? The mystery religion of Babylon was the origin of astrology, the worship of the planets in our solar system. Each planet was worshipped as a god and given a specific day of the week. Each, each of the days of the week, beginning on Sunday, the first day, is called a day of John. Each of the days of the week is called a tension, a simple transcription of the Greek tantheon, which means the god. So each day of the week is named after the god represented by the stellar object. The hours and days are based not on Yahuwah's calendar found in the Bible, but pagan astrology and worship of the planets. Stellar object day, sun, Sunday, moon, Monday, Mars, Tuesday, Mercury, Wednesday, Jupiter, Thursday, Venus, Friday, and Saturday, sun, Saturn, Saturday. Wikipedia, names of the days of the week. The pagan religions, that's the source. It's pretty crazy, isn't it? The pagans, pagan religions, most holy worship day is the worship of the sun on Sunday. This is where we get church on Sunday. The reason why the Vatican has gone to, to a lot of trouble to convince everyone that our Messiah resurrected on Sunday morning is because they want to assimilate him to the pagan god of the sun. Satan needed to find a way to convince the true followers of the Messiah to worship him, Satan, unaware, and so he set. He wanted us to worship him unaware of what we were worshiping. That is key. And so he has set aside a special day that represents Nimrod, the god of the sun, from the Tower of Babel. Babel. Nimrod was the first historical false messiah who ruled his false one world government. One world government. Does that sound familiar? Nimrod was the first historical false messiah who ruled his false one world government and religion about 2275 years before the birth of the true messiah, Yahusha. He was the first historical anti-messiah whose name in Chaldean adds up to 666. In order to justify the worship of Baal, the sun god, on Sunday, the biblical reckoning of time where days started and ended at sunset was changed to midnight. The Bible declares that the early church met early on the first day of the week. This was actually referring to just after sunset on Saturday night, not Sunday morning. That would have been late on the first day. In Jerusalem, at the time, it was recorded in the Bible. The early church was at home keeping the Sabbath with their families. Once the sun set on the Sabbath, the seventh day rest, we call Saturday night, they then met at a central place together that evening after the sun set, which was early the first day of the week. The first day, Sunday, was a work day for them. And, the, and early the first day, or late Saturday night, after the Sabbath ended, was the only time they had to gather together. To gather together. They had to go to work the next morning. Being a work day, no Jew was meeting together on what we call Sunday morning. It wasn't until Constantine changed the Sabbath to Sunday and gave everyone in his realm the day off that anyone or would actually assemble on the first day. Next, the pagan doctrine of Ishtar took a hold, and Good Friday, Easter Sunday, was ordered by the threat of death to be observed instead of the Passover and the first fruits, the feast of the first fruits. I will cover this in detail throughout this book series. Sunday worship is nowhere to be found in the Bible. This day is derived from Sol, the Roman god of the sun. Their phrase for Sunday, del solis, means day of the sun. The Christian saint Jerome commented, 
attempting to justify Sunday worship, if it is called the day of the sun by the pagans, we willingly accept this name. For on this day the light of the world arose. On this day the sun of justice shone forth. None of that is commanded by Yahuwah. Jerome just made it up and justified breaking what is commanded, the seventh day Sabbath, to keep himself from being killed in the Inquisition. Again, all of this is covered in great detail in this book series. I mention it here with the intention to establish that Sunday was the Babylonian day of worship to the sun god, the Lord, which means Baal, who is the sun god. Yes, the Lord means Baal. I used to pray in that name all the time. I could not believe this when I started learning about the truth. The Lord is not the name of the Creator. The Lord is the name, title, for the Babylonian sun god Baal, and is a pagan reference to just about all pagan gods. The Lord is a false god. Wikipedia Baal Reference Baal, also know, also rendered Baal, Biblical Hebrew, is a Northwest Semitic title and honorific meaning master or lord that is used for various gods who were patreons of the cities in the Levant and in Asia Minor, cognate to Akkadian Baal. A Baalist or Baalite means a worshiper of Baal, i.e. the Lord. There you have it, folks. I mean, it's it's right there. It's, I mean, all you have to do is do a couple, type a couple words into Google, and boom. Baal or the Lord can refer to any god and even to human officials. This is still Wikipedia. In some texts, it is used for Hadad, a god of the rain, thunder, fertility, and agriculture, agriculture, and the Lord of Heaven, since only priests were allowed to utter the Creator's divine name. Hadad, Baal, was commonly used. So, instead of them saying Yahuwah, they used a false god's name instead. This is what the Bible did. They replaced the title, the name of the Creator, and the name of the Messiah with pagan names and titles. This is called replacement theology, and it also is called synchronicity, or synchron synchronizing you know, multiple religions into one. This is what happened at the Council of Nicaea, and we will cover this in great detail in the next two books. Nevertheless, few, if any, biblical uses of Baal referred to Hadad, the Lord over the assembly of gods on the holy mount of heaven. Most refer to a variety of local spirit deities worshipped as cult images, each called Baal and regarded in the Hebrew Bible in that context as a false god, etymology. Semitic words signifying the Lord, master, owner, male, keeper, or husband. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Hadad. Hadad, this is uh, Bible study tools, the name of a Syrian god. One of the kings in Edom, he fled to Egypt, where he married the sister of Pharaoh's wife and became one of Solomon's adversaries. Hadad. The dot. A lot of information. The dot, also known as Baal, or Lord, a pagan god. Yahuwah told Elijah and Jeremiah that the Israelites would adopt the way of the pagans in Babylon who worship Baal and forget his name, Yahuwah, and that they would use the title Lord, which is a reference to Baal. This is probably one of the most important things that Christians need to learn, and that is why I'm doing these videos. 1 Kings 18, verse 18, I have not made trouble for you, Israel, Elijah replied, but you and your father's family have. You have abandoned Yahuwah's commands and have followed Baal, the Lord. Wow, it's right there, Jeremiah 23, verse 25. I have heard what the prophets say who prophesied lies in my name. They say, I had a dream, I had a dream. How long will this continue in the hearts of these lying prophets who prophesy the delusions of their own minds? They think the dreams they tell one another will make my people forget my name, just as their ancestors forgot my name through Baal, the Lord, worship. I mean, it's right there in the scripture, too. It's crazy. The Lord, 
Baal was worshipped on Sunday, the day of the invincible sun, or Del Solis, and the sacrifice to the Lord, Baal, was of the pig of Ishtar, Easter. The prophecies in First Kings that we would abandon Yahuwah and follow Baal have come true in Christianity, who calls on the Lord on Sunday, putting their faith in Easter, the sacrifice of a pig, to Baal. Just as Jeremiah foretold, we would forget the name of Yahuwah and use the Lord, as they did in Babylon. If you notice on Christmas and on Easter, you know, it's pretty common for everyone to go down and get a honey-baked ham, which is a pig. And this is why we do it. We don't really know why we do it. We just do it. That is that what we are doing spiritually. We are sacrificing the pig. By keeping that day, that day of Easter and Christmas, we are sacrificing the pig, eating the pig, on the day of that supposed God's day of worship. We do not realize it. And that is committing the abomination of desolation. We are literally damning our souls by doing this. If we keep Passover, we are sacrificing a lamb on the correct day of worship. Very few people know this or do this. We see below that the name Yahuwah was regularly pronounced by his chosen until superstitious Jews who adopted the pagan practices of their captors changed the name Yahuwah to the Lord coming out of Babylon captivity. The Encyclopedia Judanica, Volume 7, pages 680 through 682. Yahuwah, the personal name of the God of Israel, is written in the Hebrew Bible with the four consonants Yahuwah and is referred to as the Tetragrammation, at least until the destructions of the first temple. In 586 BCE, this name was regularly pronounced with its proper vowels, Yahuwah. As it, as it is clear from the Lakish letters written shortly before that date, but at least by the 3rd century BCE, the pronunciation of the name Yahuwah was avoided, and Adoni, the Lord, was substituted for it, as evidenced by the use of the Greek word Kyrios, Lord, for Yahuwah in the Septuagint, the translation of the Hebrew scriptures that began by Greek-speaking Jews in that century, where the combined form of Adoni, Yahuwah occurs in the Bible. This was read as Adoni Elohim, Lord God. I mean, that's it's just, it's just astonishing when you start to learn this stuff. We, we also see below from the same source that the Jews replaced the proper vowel points in Yahuwah with the vowel points in Adoni, giving us the name Yahuwah in error. Then, uninspired Christian translators then came up with the totally foreign name Jehovah, and that is how we get Jehovah. In total disconnect from all reality, the Jews started just saying Hashem, the name, and totally abandoned the proper name of the Creator altogether. Hashem, just the name. Remember commandment 3, do not blaspheme my name. Blaspheme means bring to nothing. The names that Yahuwah gives are contracted sentences. They actually have a meaning. They're like a full sentence. Is it We'll go over that more too. In the early Middle Ages, in the early Middle Ages, when the consonantal text of the Bible was supplied with vowel points to facilitate its correct traditional reading, the vowel points for Adoni, with one variation, a Sheva or Shiva, with the first Yod of Yahuwah, instead of the Hataf, Patath, under the Elf of Adoni, were used for Yahuwah, thus producing the form. Yahweh, Yahweh. When Christian scholars of Europe first began to study Hebrew, they did not understand what this really meant, and they introduced the hybrid name Jehovah in order to avoid pronouncing even the sacred name, Adoni, for Yahuwah. The custom was later introduced of saying simply in Hebrew, Hashem, or Aramak, Shem, the name, even in such an expression as, Blessed be he that cometh in the name of Yahuwah. This is still the Encyclopedia Judanica here. We're continuing now. This is an abomination. It is literally taking his name in vain. Vain means to bring to nothing by using titles. Yahuwah gave us his name, and he declares that 
It is his memorial for all generations. Exodus 3.15 reads, And Yahuwah said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, Yahuwah, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. His name is not the Lord, or Adonai, or Jehovah, or Jesus, or Jesus, or anything else. His name is Yahuwah. Yahweh, or Yahuwah in English, Yahweh in Hebrew, or Yah, Yah. And that is his everlasting memorial by which he is to be called upon. Our English Bibles use this title, the Lord, for Yahuwah, which is a violation of the command not to add or to subtract from his word, not to mention it is idolatry calling upon Babylonian god Baal. We, humanity, have totally forgotten the name of our creator, which was originally written in his word over 8,000 times. We replaced every reference to it with the title, the Lord, Baal. Below, we see the Jews committed this abomination out of what I call reverent stupidity as they followed the way of the pagans in Babylon. 8,000 times they, they, re, they removed that name when they translated the manuscripts. 8,000 times, and it says not to subtract or add to the scriptures. Unger's Bible Dictionary on page 665 reads, Lord, Hebrew, Adon, an early word denoting ownership, <clears throat> hence absolute control. It is not pop properly a divine title. The Jews had a superstitious reverence for the name Yahuwah, always in reading pronounce Adonai, Lord, where Yahuwah is written. It's amazing. This is, it's, it's crazy. Smith Bible Dictionary, 1872 edition, states the following. The substitution of the word Lord is most sad, for while it is in no way represents the meaning of the sacred name Yahuwah, the mind has constantly to guard against a confusion with its lower uses, and, above all, the direct personal hearing of the name on the revelation of Yahuwah is injuriously out of sight. Wow. This is extremely important, as the name of the Messiah contains the tetragrammation to fulfill the prophetic requirements of the one name under heaven whereby we must obtain salvation, or we may. Acts 4.12 reads, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Yahuwah. When I quote scripture in this book, no matter what translation I use, I will always replace the pagan reference and title of the Lord with Yahuwah. And Lord, lowercase, with the King, Messiah, as it applies to Yahusha. I will always clarify in context the use of impersonal pronouns such as he and him by identifying the subject by name. I will turn the text from passive voice to active voice. I will demonstrate when the uninspired translators are corrected in this way, the truth comes shining through as to the real meaning of the text. In doing so, many of the scriptures used to justify the false doctrines of the Incarnation and Trinity completely fall apart in light of the truth. And that is true. They also removed Messiah's name and replaced it with another one 7,000 times. And also combining the two, they call the Messiah Lord, which is not what the scripture said. All right, you guys, come back for chapter five. This is just amazing stuff here. I hope you guys read this and start doing your own research. Buy these books or I can send them to you on PDF. God bless.